I wanted to bring just a different aspect into this joint. I wanted y'all to speak on me. You know, a lot of people hear this radical side. A lot of people caught up in glorifying this 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 gangster mentality, and they think that that's me. They think that that's me, but they don't really know the real me. Y'all understand the real me. Y'all was around, and y'all know I always been a loving person, a loyal, a loyal, a loyal person. I believe in loyalty. You know what I'm saying? At the, at, the, at the same time, I just was loyal to the wrong things. But now that we older, now that we wiser, and we know that's real, we got a duty to them young boys that's out there. A lot of dudes rounding the young boys up, and they like, damn, yeah, these young boys out here, all they know about is killing, all they know about is this. But we got to bring something different to them. You get what I'm saying? We got to live through my story and show them, like, listen, he was this way. He had good, didn't he? But when he got on his gangster shit and when he got on believing the rules and the regulations of that game, that's where he crashed. So what I'm trying to do is school him through my story because, to be honest, my story not really significant. When I when, when I got a state, you know, I was feeling myself, yeah, I'm the boy with this, I'm the boy with that, caught up in my ego. And I only, when, when I got to my prison, I realized that it was a thousand vetoes up there. There was a thousand dudes that had licenses over some bullshit that don't really mean nothing that you don't even realize until you got 20 years then later. Like, dog, I played myself. I'm in prison. My motherfucker, my dad died. And I can't even be there for my dad. My mom got hard bills. I'm calling people, yo, bro, I need this, I need that. And they not there. And I don't say that because I got resentment towards the person. I got resentment towards the game and that lifestyle. You get what I'm saying? So right now, man, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just cast in, man. And I'm just getting that y'all, man. And with the help that we can bring something real instead of a lot of BS. Like a lot of dudes, they glorifying this, they glorifying that. But teach them about the other side, too. Like, tell them young boys about the other side, too. And tell them success stories. Like, yo, you good. Like, at the end of the day, you can get up out of that. You know what I'm saying? You can hustle a different way. I slow, see I'm out of my mind I pop with the nine, chop your dad, then I chop your child I chop your brother, chop your mother, see I'm chopper style I be rocking vowels, so come and holler Turk in the town, moving pounds of the powder Burst with the pounds, spinning brown like an hour Hit him up, put him in the dirt like a flower I be moving next, try and flip like a collar Show up to a set, leave him wet like a shower I'm a set, I show you how to shoot it, don't be scared, give it head I show you how to use it, I can show it yeah, that's still me. I ain't Meek Mill. People feel that just a real me. But it's so real that these haters wanna kill me. But I won't let them. This is chess and I'ma check them. Wreck them. Wet them. With that pants on that net. 45 live. Oh my God, that is slow as shit. Notice we are warning it. Heart is in the core of it. Bloomberg water click. Never been a traitor. Yeah, E N D U E N. I never been a hater. Like a crystal ball. Devin got the right. Uh -huh. He be on some hype. Ish. Right. Drop a nigga like a detainer if he a fly. Wrist. Vito turn it off and turn it on like a light switch Call DZ the jeweler cause DZ like the ice I'm the boss, Vito he the captain Pulley the assassin, Inferno he the ratchet You put your weapon down, pick your weapon up Vito from the water, so like water he gon' wet you up Had his give a block in his face when I'm good If Vito was still on these streets, man, a I lot of rappers Yeah, man, cause Vito, like him and the wrecking all that shit. You wanna feel like going to him? Go ahead, like, like A lot of man, a lot of say they love Vito, they Show love to a man. Don't you shot a nigga out and all that. You can say that. Shout out. You show love, man. Show nigga love, man. Like, for real, real. You, you shot nigga on the radio. You can keep all that shit. Yeah. Shot nigga, you can keep all that, that shit. That shit ain't gonna free. Yeah, that, that shit ain't gonna, gonna, gonna give us time, man. Nobody, nothing like that. that shit ain't gonna give us time yeah, back. Like, this, you know, that, free veto and all that. Like, it's, it's cool. But that ain't gonna give us time back. That shit ain't gonna You can't that. say you looking out when you're not really looking out because nigga, you will get exposed. Man. This shit is real on this Like, nigga, get exposed. There's a lot of people who fighting the pills and got to get up out that slam and all that. Free Vito, I mean, Turkey Home, Free DZ. And yeah, like, guys got to come home and we're going to make sure that happens. The streets are a lie. There's almost never a happy ending to these street tales. Prisons, mental institutions, death, paralysis, or a life as a convicted felon, which strips you of your right to legally own a gun, hinders your employability, and often lead you right back to the street lifestyle that got you there in the first place. Back in 1996, Hillary Clinton said, 
The fourth challenge is to take back our streets from crime, gangs, and drugs. And we have actually been making progress on this count as a nation because of what local law enforcement officials are doing, because of what citizens and neighborhood patrols are doing. We're making some progress. Much of it is related to the initiative called community policing because we have finally gotten more police officers on the street. That was one of the goals that the president had when he pushed the crime bill that was passed in 1994. They are not just gangs of kids anymore. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. We can talk about why they ended up that way, but first we have to bring them to heel. And the president has asked the FBI to launch a very concerted effort against gangs everywhere. I vehemently disagree with the sentiment that these kids are irredeemable or it's somehow their fault that they are in the conditions of extreme poverty, wealth inequality, and a system in which historically this country has placed them at the very bottom of the hierarchy. Young black boys are generally some of the most vulnerable individuals in this country to the things I just mentioned. If you add over policing, broken families, the school to prison pipeline, untreated mental illness, toxic masculinity, and a society that up until very recently has told them that they absolutely don't matter. You have the exact recipe for what you are seeing today. Over 560 murders last year, 499 in 2020. The overwhelming majority of the shooters and victims were young black boys and men between the ages of 14 and 25. We see the problems in our community and can identify some of the causes. The solutions are a lot harder to get at. The United States has responded to poverty with different methods and various measures of success. There are 35 million people living in poverty in the United States today. In 1964, President Lyndon B. Johnson announced a war on poverty. It was legislation aimed at getting federal funding to the organizations and individuals who were below the poverty line. It had many fans and many critics. One of the most famous critics of the new rules was Martin Luther King who said, programs created under the war on poverty, such as housing programs, job training, and family counseling, all had a fatal disadvantage because the programs have never proceeded on a coordinated basis. And he noted that, at no time has a total coordinated and fully adequate program been conceived. That we spend $322,000 for each enemy we kill in Vietnam, while we spend in the so-called war on poverty in America only about $53 for each person classified as poor. The promises of the great society have been shut down on the battlefield of Vietnam. In the 1960s, Philadelphia's way to help alleviate poverty was to build various housing projects throughout the city. The most notorious of them being the Norman Blumberg Projects, or the Blum. When Blumberg was built in the late 1960s, it was at the tail end of a public high-rise building boom in Philadelphia. Federal housing officials at the time said it was the best way to house the largest number of people for the least amount of money. It was also a way to clear blighted blocks in the inner city. Slum clearance, they called it. The Blumberg complex took up eight acres of the North Philly neighborhood known as Shardswood and consisted of two brick high rises, a senior tower, and 15 low rise buildings, all clustered around a courtyard. By the late 1960s, when the first families were moving into Blumberg, Public housing had already gotten a bad reputation in America, and the story of Blumberg is a story of many high-rises across the country. The towers became homes of just concentrated poverty, being built in poor, mostly black neighborhoods like Sharswood, where middle-class families, mostly white, were moving out, and there were very few opportunities for work. What comes along with concentrated poverty is a host of other social ills, disinvestment in not only the housing, but the schools and other community amenities, which then leads to other problems like crime and violence. By the time more than 500 families were forced to move out in 2016 in preparation for its demolition, the poverty and crime rates at Blumberg were double the rest of the cities. 
Crime maps show Blumberg like a bright red dot in the middle of Sharswood, a clearly marked hot spot for violent and drug crimes. Many families who lived in the Blum moved in the buildings that were first built and have been there for a few generations. It was one of the most tight knit, yet most dangerous part of the city for decades. A lot of young black men who were born there have succumbed to the street life and mentality. One of them is Daniel Johnson, or better known on the streets as Vito. In May of 2009, Vito was sentenced to life in prison after being convicted of first degree murder in the shooting of an unattended bystander who was struck in a hail of bullets from an AK-47 outside of Harrisburg bar. At the time of his sentencing, he faced two more homicide trials in Philadelphia, where he was captured after the February 2008 shooting outside the Jazzland bar that killed Malik Young Sr. On January 11, 2013, Vito was convicted of another murder that took place outside a bar on Pike Street. Vito is currently fighting his conviction and is in the appeal process. What's up, brother? Yo, what's up with you, bro? How are you? I'm good, man. So, um, yeah, what did you, uh, how you holding up, first of all? How you holding up, man? I'm good, bro. I'm good, man. I'm maintaining. I feel good. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm all right, man. Real shit, man. All right. Any anytime I, I I talk to somebody that's um you know behind them walls, I always got to check on their spirit and their mental and make sure they holding up, man. Cause I know they try to break you in there, bro. I know what they doing there, man. This is a call from yeah. Pennsylvania State Correctional no. Institution, Green. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. That's that's what it's designed to do, man. No doubt, man. So I'm definitely on everything and trying to protect myself from from the mental. Yeah. Into man, as much as I could, man. Yes, because you gotta protect your mind in there, because that's the that's the strongest thing. Your body, your physical might be strong, but you you gotta keep your mental the strongest. You know that. I'm not telling you nothing you don't know. No. Um, I'm just letting you no. know. I'm I got you. Uh, we recording right now, so uh, I just wanted to make you aware of that. You know what I mean? Uh, that's cool. That's cool. That's good. Um, and then it's not everything like you mean you can say whatever you want we can you you gonna have full editorial control over what words that you speak will go on you know that will go on the uh, actual um video so speak freely don't worry about nothing you know i, I got you bro I, I got you i'm not gonna put nothing out there right, to say, you mean say no more say no more I'm with it. all right all right so uh did um did Send you the questions from last night? Bro, send me the questions, man. Like I said, man, I'm free. Like, I'm free, man. I'm definitely ready ready, ready for anything, man. So we can just go, you know what I mean? Where'd you go to school? And what um, what was your, like, feeling towards education at the time? I was. Uh, so my first school that I started off, my elementary school. Pennsylvania was, State Correctional Institution, Green. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. Was Reynolds. I went from Reynolds right down the street. I went to Boston. Then eventually, Ben Franklin ended, uh, ended up, Ben Franklin High School ended up being uh, the high school that I went to in ninth grade, like the last grade that I completed. But, you know, school for me was like a place for me to like spread my wings. My you know what I'm saying? I come from the projects, and anybody that ever lived in the projects you know that's like a world, in a world. I mean, when you got your own culture, you got your own values, and you got your own set of dudes that you strictly be around. You know what I'm saying? That's how it was for me. So when I finally got a chance to go outside of the neighborhood, it was like me being a new world. I'm being new chicks. I'm being new mother neighbors. I never met. I'm listening to the lingo. It was like a, like, like, like a chance for me to really spread my way because my father was real strict. I had a dad who was on my top for everything. So the only time I really got to be me was even I was mom was away and that was like the school. What was mom like? You said you said dad was real strict. What tip was mom on? Yeah. Dad was just told us my mom was like a sweetheart. You know what I'm saying? But my father was like the king of the castle, so I was getting my ass whooped. Okay. Mm. Like, like I said, my father, he grew up real rough, man. He ain't really know. He thought he was uh, teaching me 
uh, uh, tough love, but it was making me tougher. It was making me cold. You know what I'm saying? Because everything, dad, who you knows, I'll beat your ass. This is how I'm supposed to be. He ain't going to tell you he loved me. So I found love out in them streets. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And that's how it was for me. Wow. Yeah, no, that's an interesting I'm dynamic done. you just mentioned there because um, parenting is a, is a very uh, thin line to walk because, you know, like, I mean, in a situation, your situation isn't unique in a, in a sense that when you have overly disciplinary parents, and this is not to put blame on your father or nothing, but this is just the effect that it, it, it can have on people, you know? Um, yeah, no doubt, because, because no one like, when, when, you know, when I was young, I didn't understand what it was, but now that I'm old, now that I'm red, now that I learned to educate myself, you know, it's, 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 it's that slave master mentality that get passed down. So the mothers and the, and the fathers used to have to beat the kids' ass for the slave master don't beat the ass, but kids don't learn like that. You know what I'm saying? You whooping the kids' ass, they not going they not going to learn from that. All they gonna learn is to be more rebellious. Because don't nobody learn from getting the ass with you get what I'm saying? Like that's that's that, that's not in the nature, it's just more tougher them and make it more tougher. But you know, our parents get that from the slave master days and mm. it just got passed down to the generation I'm born. So the master don't do it. The put their things, they put their things down even more violent. So it was a protection thing that we used, but now we get passed down generation after generation, and we don't even understand the uh, the abuse that we're doing to our kids and our children. We don't even understand generational uh, 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 abuse getting passed down. That's real, bro. So that I think with it, but like for the most part, my stopping grounds was from. Projects all the way down over the Bluffbird project. That was the main area that I that I frequented every day. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like that was the, so anything in between that I, I walked past. I walked down the street to the Bird Street to Montgomery to Ridge Avenue to Turner to all the way down. That that that, that was the areas that I was uh that that I was uh down the past. You know what I'm saying? Like so, all the dudes that was in between all of that needed that's. That's the neighborhood that I uh, started to learn. Because, uh, you know, I was, like I said, originally I was done a project, but what happened was they uh, did renovations on it and they started building a project there, so we moved down to Diamond Street Project until Plumper was done. I used to live right on 21st and Cecil B. Moore, and I used to venture in the Diamond, uh, excuse me, in the Blumberg sometimes to grab some tree or whatever. And uh, I, I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm gonna tell you now, bro. If I didn't know a couple people in there, I would not have never stepped foot in there because it's like it's a whole different <laughs> world in that joint. Like you stepping, it's a, it was enclosed, and it was like once you got in there, you in there, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I'm familiar yeah. with your area a yeah. little bit. <laughs> I'm just like I, I'm glad I knew a couple people in there. I mean, they kept me safe. Um, all right. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What you was gonna say, son? No, I'm just saying it's crazy that it was wild, but now that I'm removed from it, I'm able to look like, damn, you know, my lifestyle was crazy. But when I was put up in it, that just was regular day life. It was just you everyday know? life, right? Because you, you. Yeah, you don't you, yeah, you don't know enough enough. Like I'm not gonna say you don't know enough enough, but you haven't experienced anything else. You know what I mean? Like so that that is your whole no world. No doubt. And that's 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 a transgenerational problem. Like that that that'll go from generation to generation. You know, like um, yeah. So uh, all right. Number question number three. What age were you when you first got arrested? I was 13 or 14 years old. First time I ever got arrested was for burglary, and I didn't even know. I wound up receiving a stolen property, and when the cops came. They locked me up for the burglary. You know, I ain't do no talking. I ain't do no telling. So, yeah, that was, that was like my first thing. My fault. My daughter had turned the TV up. Okay. All right. Um. All right. So, how old were you when you first got shot? And how did that... Oh, this is a two-part question. How old were you when you first got shot? And then how did that change... If it Did that change your attitude towards the streets? Well, I was, uh, I was 15 years old when I got shot. And it definitely had a huge effect on me. It definitely had, like, it took, like, people you tell me all the time, like, man, you ain't the same since you got shot. But it definitely made me more defensive. You know what I mean? I seen my mom cry. Uh, I, I, I was in a coma for three months. Wow. I, was, I, was, I was down. So it changed me in ways that I don't even know. 
know what I'm saying? But it made me more defensive. It made me uh, 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 more revengeful. Like I felt some type of way because it was like a, a striking. And especially in the so it was just a striking. I just, I just made a promise to myself, like, you know, man, I ain't never going to put myself in a situation like this. You know what I'm saying? Now, right or yeah or yeah or had you need, yeah that's that's a horrible position to put your mom in um so were you without getting too detailed were you targeted or were you just around the wrong people or like you know what i mean I like was on a mission. okay i was on a mission i was out there i was on a mission you okay Right. Okay. We don't gotta say no more on the situation. Um. All right. So, when did your relationship with Joey Jahad first start, and what was what was y'all's relationships in terms of dynamics, and are y'all still cool? Uh. All right. So, my relationship first started with Joey when I was on house arrest. But you know, at this time, well, before I got on house arrest, I got on house arrest right after I got shot because no places would take. But once I got shot, you know what I mean, they had to just put me on house arrest to hold me. So I wound up being Joey because Joey came down to my crib with young Bob one day to uh, record for headshots DVD. So I wound up spitting, I wound up going in, and the connection just was love. You know what I'm saying? He was buzzing at this time. And uh, What year was this, knew, like, if you can remember? This was about, I'm thinking of around like four, oh five. Right. Sometime around there, yeah, sometime around there, uh, oh four, oh five. We wind up linking up, and uh, since that day, it just it just was love. We just was cool with each other. You know what I mean? He was coming down to my project, like come down here, man, come fuck with me here, come down. He'd come around the whole project, he'd walk around. I'm like, bro, you good? We gonna link up? And he just noticed the respect that I had in my hood. You know what I'm saying? At this time, I'm I'm a young boy. I'm 14, 15 years years old. Got shot all up. You know what I'm saying? So he just knew that I was different in that way. He knew I was raw. He knew I was rugged, and I just was. A the love that he was down there like a celebrity at this time. Right. So we, we, it was cool. It was all love. I wound up getting locked up. And I wound up getting caught with a gun and I got locked up. And at the time, when I got locked up, uh, this one, the, the, you know, the situation happened when he got, when he got snuck. Somebody punched him or whatever like that. What year was that? I'm sorry. Not to interrupt you. But year, what, what year did that had that whole situation happen with the, um, with the happened, uh, catching him on I camera? I think around like, I think like 2005, 06 somewhere around that time oh wow that was longer than i thought okay okay all right because uh i remember when i remember when all that went down okay all right but that you mean okay so that happened go ahead continue the story locked up one day so i call him and i didn't even know that it happened and i wound up calling my home like phone for me talk to me told me he got me or whatever like that i need you out here bang so the whole time I was locked up, he was looking out for me. Anything that I acted for, he was looking out for me. He was doing more than dudes around my way was doing. So I'm like, you know, when I get home, man, I'm fucking with you and we're going to do it. Mm. So I wound up getting home. When I got home, we was inseparable. I'm like, listen, bro, you know, never you with me, man, and we we going to be good. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to worry about that no more. I'm going to hold you down, bro. I got you. I'm going to make sure you ain't never got to worry about getting snaked. And that's just what it was. We was inseparable. So I started writing more. I started doing more music because I was doing the music, but I wasn't never really putting my heart into it because I was out there ripping and running the streets. You know what I'm saying? I was trapping. I was out there, and I had old heads calling me, yo, yo, V, this is the situation. We need this. We need that. This is a call from this, Pennsylvania that. State Correctional Institution, Green. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. Between, between my man, sir, this one I really started honing my rap skills. So what was like? One, one, one minute I was in the streets and the projects, and then my dynamic with Joey was, we was doing music, we was getting away. He was taking me out of town. Just, he was taking me to Delaware, he was taking me to New Jersey. I was seeing a different part of things with him, and that's one thing I always uh, thank you for, because he did take me out of the hood. He did take me away from strictly Blumberg. He did take me around the city and let me, you know what I mean, see different things and let me link up with other dudes, and that's where a lot of my uh, love come from now, you know what I mean, other than my hood. So that 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 was our relationship. He was like my brother, you know what I'm saying? He was like my brother, and I was there for him. You know what I mean? He was there for me, and that's how we was rocking at that time. So my next question is actually going to be void then, because I was going to ask, was there any jealousy involved either way, like him towards you, you think, or you towards him? I mean, you can answer no, that question, no. but go ahead. 
Yeah, I mean, we ain't never had that jealous. We ain't never had no jealousy, of course. You know, like our relationship now because I'm in prison. You get what I'm saying? It's definitely not the same. Like I ain't hear nothing from had in years. You know what I'm saying? And I told a lot of dudes, not just them, but I need help. You know what I'm saying? Like I need help, bro. Like I'm in here and I'm not the same individual that I was. I grew up. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I feel some type of way, especially to help because I could. I got. I got the right to feel some type of way to help because at the end of the day. I was there for him like nobody else was ever there, uh, uh, ever there for him. Okay. You get what I'm saying? But I don't hold hate. I don't help hold no resentment. I don't hold no jealousy in my heart for him. But, you know, I definitely wish that things could be better. And I hope that maybe when he hear this and when he see this, this is that a call from there, Pennsylvania State Correctional Institution, Green. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. Exactly. What I'm on because I need help, man, and I'm fighting and I'm trying. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting it together, man. I'm doing this shit from the muscle by myself. That's real, bro. Listen, that's the, probably the realest answer you could have gave because I, I know a lot of people would um, feel some type of way uh, being in your situation and um, y'all y'all relationship. So uh, I, I appreciate the honesty on the answer on that. All right, so that that you you and had y'all y'all were cool, um, and you know y- y'all had a, a a relationship kind of a give and take. You know, like y- y'all he you had something to offer him. Um, in terms of like, you know, I wouldn't say street credit or, or protection, but like he, he felt safe moving in certain neighborhoods with you and with him the the court, the sort of give and take to with, with you was, you know, he, uh, he was on a little bit, you know, he was popping, he was popular and, and he could, um, he could show you different, um, or not show you, but, uh, he introduced you to, uh, things that you might not have seen otherwise, um. Is is that no, you you exactly. that's accurate? Okay. Okay. All right. So I, I'm I'm pretty uh I understand y'all relationship there. Now, did you have a relationship with me? No doubt. I had a I had a, I had a, a relationship with me. You know what I'm saying? Like you know I I I knew me. I grew up. We grew up in the same the same era. He was from Berkshire. Street. I was from Blumberg, but I moved down Diamond Street, so I walked past him there my whole life. Right. You get what I'm saying? So I knew exactly who he was. You know, at that time, at one point, we never really spoke like that. You know how I go. You're from a different neighborhood. I'm from a different neighborhood, but we understand he, we understand who each other is. And he was tearing it down at this time. He was a hot bar spitter, and I was a hot bar spitter. So, you know, we had, like, this uh, defensive type energy towards each other. But as we got older and as we both started to advance in the game, I was dealing with hands. He was doing his thing with headshots or whatever like that. It became all love. Whenever I seen him, you know what I mean? He come down my neighborhood. He already know, bro, you good. You ain't got to worry about nothing. Whenever I was in the streets, it was the same thing. I respected him because he was uh, uh, a street dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, he wasn't none of these suckers. He was none, none of these weirdos. He was he, he was involved, you know, involved. You know what I'm saying? So that was our relationship. And, you know, we ran across each other a lot. You know what I mean? From uh, party, our party days when we was throwing parties, and I mean we was in the studio a lot of times around each other a lot of times, and he got the uh, he fighting for the same thing that I'm fighting for, man. We we we, we got the same goals. We try and both uh, uh awake awake our people, man, and, and and try to fight this wicked system, man. So I definitely it's definitely all love between me. I definitely wish that I can get at him and have an outlet outlet to him because I'm passionate about uh trying to just awaken our people, man, and just, just just give them game. And I hope that we could link up one day. But I understand, man, he got a lot going on. But I definitely, definitely want to link up with him and, and, and see how I can help uh, uh, Gavin out the troops that's in here and then link up with his movement for prison reform because I definitely got a lot of issues that uh, I'm getting together with the fellas in here, man, and we fighting, man, and we pushing and we trying to save our people, man. So... That's how my relationship started with me, right. from him being around the same neighborhood, the same guys he know, the same guys I know. And whenever we met each other, it was all love. Man. Well, since we time. since we on the topic, man, and um, I, this isn't one of the written questions, but I, I I'm I'm appreciating your answers so far. So let me let me let me ask you this. Um, uh-huh. all right, so you you came up in the D. I, I, I'm gonna call it the DVD era. You know what I mean? No doubt. Um. Have you been listening to music lately out of Philly? Yeah, I've been listening to music lately. What's your opinion yeah. on on this whole drill drill scene and this drill culture and um the, the way that rap I guess has changed in the last ten years? 
right. I have several <laughs> different, like, answers, you know what I mean? Because I don't want to become the old head that's in jail, that's <laughs> stuck in his era, stuck in his time, or whatever like that. So I, all, I, I like to listen to the talent, and I say, damn, this dude is talent. But a lot of the shit is trash music. They not really talking about nothing. The dudes can't really rap. Everybody got the style, and I just, I, like, for me, understanding, I, I could relate to them because I was them. Mm-hmm. I was them young boys that was out there that was talking about the struggle that was in it, but from now, I'm conscious. Now, the destruction that we are all causing with our with music. Because music always been the vessel. They always been the thing that kept us together. Music always been the key to our soul, the rhythm to our soul, and the force behind the people and, and the movement. If you listen, if you look back in the sixties, seventies, talking about white music, uh, the system, the bringing black. Together, and black is beautiful. And now that you listen to the music, it's leading people to a path of chaos and destruction. So we got to be careful with what we putting out there because it's dangerous. You know what I'm saying? You got these kids talking about drilling. They talking about living this lifestyle, and it's a false lifestyle. It's not real. And you think that your home is going to be loyal? You know, you think that your home is going to be real? So you got another thing coming. I'm telling you because I am that. I was this dude that was real. I'm up here with all the dudes who claim they was real and claim that they not suckers and they got a hundred years and ain't nobody doing nothing from them. Their mom's dying and their father's dying and ain't nobody even 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 trying to answer the phone for them. So at the end of the day, we got to watch the message that we're giving to the people because if not, then this vicious, vicious cycle is going to keep on continuing. It's going to keep on continuing because words is powerful and you be your words. You know what I'm saying? So you got to watch your words, you know what I mean? You got to watch your thoughts because your thoughts become your words and watch your words because your words become your actions. So, like, you know what I mean? We just got a lot that we really got to focus on, and man. We got, to, we got to be responsible for everything that we put out, and it got to have some type of substance behind it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's... it's it's real, man. It's real. Like, the young boys out there, they're killing each other now, back and forth. And it's for nothing. And the cycle keep on continuing. Like, we, we, we got to realize who our enemies is. You know what I'm saying? Because when I'm up here and down, I'm looking around, it's like, damn, he killed another black person. He killed another black person. And you don't even understand we all oppressed. We all going through the same struggle. And this is what oppressed people do. The Italians was doing it to each other. You know what I'm saying? Before they bought them programs and things to help them prosper and get out of it. Now our people caught up in it. And, and then the cycles keep on continuing because we don't understand our history. We don't understand who the true enemies is. So our mind state and everything that we're doing is coming from a Western point of view. So now our values becoming, I'm going to kill you over this money, over this block. I'm going to get the money, and I'm going to spend the money with the Europeans. I'm going to kill you, or I'm going to fuck, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this and get my ass done and then spend the money with the Europeans. In return, we tear down our neighborhoods. In return, uh, we're hurting our own people. And we're caught up in the same cycle, and it's not getting us nowhere, man. So we have to be responsible for what we put out there, especially the ones that understand this. And this is where I stand at, and this is where I come from. Like, damn, I'm sitting back, I'm up here, and I like, I, I got a duty to my people, man, and give it to them real. And I'm going through that, man, no matter if I'm out there, no matter if I'm in here, man, because freedom is a perspective. You know what I'm saying? I talk to some people on the, on, on the phone, and they more depressed than I am, and I'm in here with this situation, man. So I'm fighting, bro. I'm just going, and I feel like I got a duty to my people, man, and just give them game real, man, and that's what I'm going to do. And that uh that that depression that depression thing is real because um if you listen to like all right just uh, just you have to, one minute left damn let's start, uh-huh. I was just gonna say just real quick I got a couple more questions maybe we can get them in later but uh just to just to touch on what you were saying um the pain thing is real because if you listen to these guys interviews and you listen to these guys talk they, they talk about the pain and they they try to wrap it up and put a pretty a uh, pretty bow on it in the videos and the music and stuff but it ain't nothing pretty about it man it, this is all pain this is all uh, mental torment that's been going on in, in the hoods and 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 we we see the results of it uh, let me i'll hit you back one more time you want me to keep going yeah yeah do that do that hit me right back uh, all right uh uh you know what I'm saying? 15 years old, you go to this dramatic situation, and you got the dudes who I'm around, and the rules and the regulations of the game that I'm following this in. I mean, you get put in this situation, you got to turn up, you know what I mean? Get hit or get killed. And you don't ever want to be in this position no more. And I'm thinking, all right, damn, I got to turn up instead of turn it down. And when somebody try... Go ahead, I'm sorry, I ain't mean to cut you off, bro. Oh, uh, you good, bro. 
all right so if when, when and when somebody get when somebody gets shot right like all right in the, in the, in the, in the normal in the normal uh world where you're not living in when you're not living in the projects and living in the situation that you was in, like in the normal world, who who would you turn to in a situation like that? Like you you, you saying you was having issues with your dad, so you can't turn to him. You mean you, 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 your whole your whole leg right right? That's what I'm trying to get at. Your whole your whole legacy tells you not to turn to the police. So where do you turn to? You have one minute left. Right. So um, let's just let's just get into whatever, however much you're comfortable getting into. I'll let you lead the way. So can you just um, lead me into how, why you're incarcerated today? As obviously as much as you can get into. I don't want you to uh, say anything you're not comfortable saying. But um, let's just tell the people like what what your situation is currently. All right. So you know what I mean. Basically, right now. I'm convicted of five separate homicides, but uh, so basically I was charged with a homicide, uh, me and one of my rabbits. Shout out to Gold Free Gold. I was charged with uh, a homicide, and basically, man, like every week, man, they was coming to hounding me. They was coming hounding me about murders. You know what I mean? Every week they pulling me out. They pulling me out. They're like, we're going to charge you with this murder. We're going to charge you with this murder. Or we just heard about another murder. Out in Harrisburg, so then they take me to Harrisburg. They charge me with that murder. So that's my second body that I got charged. Then they come like a month later and charge me with another homicide. Then my lawyer comes to visit me. Well, not my lawyer, this public defender that I had. You know what I'm saying? You know, ain't nobody look out for me. Ain't nobody help me out. So he can't. He say, "Listen, man, they want you for three other murders, especially two. They want to come charge you with these two murders." So the whole time I was locked up for about five five to six years still going to court. I, I wound up getting convicted nine months in South Harrisburg. You know what I'm saying? They played file data with the deals. This is a call from Pennsylvania State Correctional Institution. Green. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. I received a life sentence out there in nine months. I was I had a life sentence, so I was coming back and forth down Rick. They had me locked down. They had me housed on death row. I was housed on the same block from Omea. You know what I'm saying? I was locked on the same block with, mind you, I'm 19 years old, 20 years old, and I'm on death row. You get what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm still going to trial in Philadelphia for two other homicides at this time. So when I go down to go fight a homicide, and I'm on a, in my Philly case with my rabbit gold, I lose. I get a life sentence. Now, remind you, I got another homicide that I'm fighting a month later. And I put my family through a lot. My mom and I'm stressing she's going through a lot. And I, and, I, and I talked to my lawyer. I said, listen, I know that they want me for these other homicides. So how about uh, y'all give me 20 to 40, but y'all run it together with this life sentence that I already got. So the DA wanted convictions, and I knew they wanted convictions. I knew they were both convictions. You know what I'm saying? They tried to get me to implement other people inside these homicides. No dice. I ain't doing no talking. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't going out like that. Y'all give me 20 to 40 for these three separate homicides, and y'all run them together with the homicide that I just lost. That's what they did. So that, so that, so them three, them three homicides are run concurrent, which means that they ran together with the license that I got. So once I get my license back, all I have is about five, six years left to do on this 20 to 40. 
the, the, life, the, the life conviction that I got in Harrisburg is, is about to get overturned. The case about to get tossed because they just now found a Brady violation. You know what I'm saying? They did me dirty. They, they gave witnesses deals that they lied about. So, you know what I mean? Even though the document may seem heavy and it may seem like a heavy situation, the, the, the lane is wide open for me. My appeal is in right now for my Philadelphia homicide, and I'm in the midst of getting a lawyer, but I need help. You know what I'm saying? Like, they did me dirty. When they find out and they hear your name in a bunch of different situations, they just going to charge you and charge you and charge you and charge you up. But the thing that they did was the evidence didn't, the physical evidence didn't line up to what the witnesses were stating. And as I got smarter, as I got wise to start learning law, I found a lot of errors that they did. They played dirty, man. They got me out of the way. I just was young. I just was poor, and I ain't know anything. Back then, life wasn't worth living. That this shit was about that. And that I was the game meant so much. And people wrote to the homies on me so much. But then I found out 15, 16 years later that that game don't care about me. Don't nobody care about me, man. That it's not real. Now, I mean, them dudes screaming, we don't deal with rats. They got me dealing with rats. Dudes is on the streets dealing with rats. Uh, 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 all this you ride for your homies, you be there for your homies, it's false. Uh, you know what I mean? That I glorified, that I was living up to, that we fought victim to, like it's BS. You know what I mean? When I was out there in it, I thought that it was the realest thing to me and that it really meant something. I mean, only to find out at the beginning in here that I've been lied, that I've been tricked, that I've been deceived, that my real enemies, not my own people, and not the dude that's down the street, that it's, it's, it's this wicked system that. Cajun is just locking it in, that's having us hate each other. So we so much distracted by uh, the things that's going on in our urban communities that we can't even really see who the real enemy is and what we have to do, man. So I just want the youth and all them young boys that's out there, man, caught up in it, man. I just want them to, to, to get themselves some time, man, and just be uh, be truthful with themselves, man. And when you be truthful with yourself and when you do you and not worry about what society try to set, then you'll be successful, man. And uh, learn your history, man, because it's pivotal. In order to know where you're going, you got to know where you've been. And in your particular situation, you didn't even have really time to see. Uh, I think a lot, of the, a lot of the time what happens is, you know, you, you said that the first time you got shot, you was 15. So your whole, I mean, that obviously would take, any um type of uh, um, normalcy out of out of your out of your life at that point, and so what? So I think a lot of the times we we're catching we're catching these kids a little bit too late because you you said you were facing uh, these murder charges at nineteen. Yeah. So. Nineteen years old. Yeah. So you know I. I a lot of times that's like too late to catch people like so if i guess what i'm trying to get at is how do we how do we how do we get these kids younger like you know before they hit puberty like how, could, because there's no 10 year old that's just you know living a normal life and then just decides one day you know sitting in class i'm gonna just i'm gonna pick up a gun or yeah, we have to do like the real men is out there. And I'm happy that a lot of awareness is going on that a lot of dudes is doing this now. It's keeping it real with them, but we have to, you know what I'm saying? We have a duty to get this out, man. I appreciate you getting my voice out there, and I hope that some young boys do here. Like, damn, you know, Bull was really in it, and the game did him dirty like this, you know what I'm saying? And he ain't getting nothing from it like that shit, bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I hope that this message get out there because we, we, we have to grip, grip our kids up young. This is a Pennsylvania yeah. State Correctional Institution. Why, Green. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. And that's why it, it, it's important for the fathers to be around. You know what I'm saying? Because this is a rule that the fathers have to take, and we have to use uh, 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 a system and a structure and a way of parenting uh, 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 our youth. We have to use it for my We have to use our method. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 building up a community and, and, and having a spiritual system that's built and that's in place based off of what our ancestors was on, based off what we was on because we follow on a whole different standard and we follow on something that's, 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 that's not even us. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So we, 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 we beating our kids' ass, 
we're not telling our kids that we love them, so therefore they're going out to the streets. And that's all I wanted. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you this because I was once them young boys. I just wanted love. I wanted love for my father. You know what I'm saying? I wanted love. I wanted to be. I wanted. I wanted him to hang around me, to be around me, to show compassion and things like this. To be told that yeah, you good, you are, right, that you could do anything that you want. And I needed him to really guide me and be there. Now he loved me without a doubt. He loved me, but his love was he showed it in a different place because he didn't have a format when he was growing up. So we got to break the cycle. You know what I'm saying? We got a duty to break the cycle, man, and we got to learn how to love each other. You know what I'm saying? We don't really know how to love each other. We think that loving is giving a young boy a gun, that loving is giving a young boy some work, that love is, yeah, man, this is how you're supposed to do, and it's some bullshit. We missing the game up in between real life. So we getting real life and the game can screw. You know what I'm saying? So we're trying to mix real life with rules by the game, and it don't mix. You know what I'm saying? We got to teach each other right and not use them rules of that game because that game is bullshit. That ain't nothing but uh, a tool used to destroy each other, to get over on each other, to, to, to manipulate our women, to manipulate our young boys that's out there, man. And we get caught up in the same circle, in the same cycle. You only realize it when you're done. By the time we're 19, 18, we done. You know what I'm saying? You done. Either you got, either you getting killed or you went here and you got a million years. You know what I'm saying? That's just how I go. And being as though that this was, um, in my opinion, systematically uh, implemented, like this, just these. You have one minute left. These things basically just weren't. Um, is this isn't by accident? So is this your last minute, or you get to call back, or what? Well, I probably could call back in like 15 minutes. If that's cool, bro. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so just go ahead. I'll give you the last 30 seconds, bro. Uh, you know, I, I I just wanna I mean have a shout out to everybody that's rocking out for the jails, man. And just uh just let the people know, man, that I'm trying, man, and I need the help. We need the support, man. The prisons need help. We need support, man, in order for us to get our message out there to the youth, man, and just let people know that. You know what I mean? We ain't working. That it's not all over for us and that it's not done, man. So, you know, I appreciate the outlet and I just appreciate the love. Perfect, perfect. All right, give me a call back when you can, bro. All right, say no more. All right, no more. all right. All right, so we got Vito back here. Uh, we we were talking about um, giving people uh, a platform to speak uh, to the youth, to the younger guys. I mean, I'm 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 aiming for for kids sixteen and under, really fifteen and under. Really, I want to catch them, catch them as young as possible, um, because. You know, a lot of times, by the time you are 14 or 15, um, your mind can be made up on which direction you're going to take in life um, or circumstances have already made that up for you. So, um, all right, just to put a time frame, we, we, we talked, Vito, we talked a little bit about your situation, but just to put a time frame on it, you was 19 uh, when you first got arrested, I mean, for, for, these, for this situation? I was 19. All right, so um, what year was this? Oh eight. Oh eight. So you've been sitting for the last thirteen years straight. Thirteen going on fourteen. Yep. Yeah. All right. Just Nineteen years old, and uh, I got arrested in June, June of two thousand eight. Okay, June of two thousand eight, and that was just for one uh homicide correct and then as you were sitting they just kept stacking them on top and stacking them on top <clears throat> all right so um i guess a couple questions i have is one one um how big of a part or no let, let's just put it like this if all we're seeing, if all you're exposed to is the negative aspects of the hood, what, what how, how as a, a child who hasn't been reached yet by a, a positive adult, like what, I guess, what, what type of mind frame do you think somebody would have to be in to go down the path that um, people like yourself did? Like, I, I, I heard you, ex you explain, you, you explain about your, your, your your parents um and how they were but but like even outside the home um uh, what type of things were you seeing every day that kind of normalized um 
the street life? imagine inside our urban communities. I've seen murder, I've seen robbery, I've seen drugs, I've seen sex, I've seen the worst of the worst, but it was normal to me. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't until I got into here to where so I was able to have conversations with people from different walks of life or, or, or talk to people from different walks of life on the phone and, and recognize, like, damn, like, what I was going through was normal. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was normal to, all right, damn, he got a gun on me, he's trying to get a gun, or oh, he's beefing. Why, well, right, what's the man got killed? All right, damn, like, one of my homies going to get killed this year. How many of us going to get killed? Who's going to be? Is it going to be me next? Like, that's normal. You know what I'm saying? That's just the way that it go. And, and go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, well, I was, I was just going to say, yeah, just to, you know, go off what you were saying, you were saying it, it's normalized. Now, also, like, like people people's relationship with with um law enforcement in terms of like if you see now i i know you you said your situation you, you you're not talking to cops and, and and i i don't blame you in your situation but just say to somebody who knows something about uh an incident and either are afraid to come forward because they've been ingrained uh, it's been ingrained Correctional institution Green. This call is subject to reporting and monitoring. It's been ingrained in their head that, um, you know, snitching is 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 not the, is not the right way to go. Not only that, even if you in your heart of hearts you feel like, um, you know, reporting on something you've seen or or telling on a murder, even if you do feel like that's the right way to go, um, the community will give you so much pushback that, um. And, and and the whole reason I bring this up is because um, I'm making a video about how um, this young guy, uh, he was 23, he got killed on the 4th of July, um, and there's everybody, there's so many people in the community that knows what happened, right? And not that I'm saying that people need to come forward, but I think one of the ways like we can kind of, I know it starts with us, but like in, in our in our mindset but like what, what what was like the relationship with law enforcement and um i guess like how can we bridge that not bridge the gap because i don't think there is a way to bridge a gap with the current state of the policing in this in this city but like what can the community do because i know that like 99 percent of people are not with all this violence. So like what can the community do to kinda like well, help this well, out? You got to understand that they never gonna help us with our problems. If they wasn't put in place to help us with our problems, we got to understand the fortune of all the way down. I did, yeah. So, they were they were established to watch over property, watch over slaves. So when I Is old and, and the mannerisms automatically off the blank, they gonna feel everything that the ancestors felt when he see a police officer or when he met with that presence because energy is real. You know what I'm saying? And this system will never be for us. And they are the entity that put us in place. But it's behind those people. So then you'll go to the officers and then you'll go to the judges and then you'll go to the politicians. Absolutely. All this is the truth. So it's deeper than just the police, you know what I'm saying? They're never going to be forced because the origins of them and what it, what it was created by, uh, 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 they was put into place to uh, put fear in us, to install fear in us, to, uh, to, 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 to kill us. So we were dirty, and that's why I have it now. So there's never be the answer for us. What we have to do, we have to police ourselves and deal with our own problems and be honest. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. You have to be honest because there's a reason why Acting the way that we act, and they all gonna fix our problems. You never, I never met a police officer and felt safe in my life. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never met a police officer in my life and felt, damn, I'm safe when they come to me. I always met them and I was filled with suspicion. You know what I'm saying? And that's because the reality is not the reality. The reality is the reality. They the ones that's gunning us down. They the ones that's training us on the You have one minute left. They the ones that's doing this journey. 
that's what the reality is. So we have to really, really, really dig deep, and we have to understand the people we are trying to change. But you know, those stories are going to keep coming up. It's going, it's going to be dudes that's going to be telling, and it's going to be dudes that's going to be caught up in that shit and that lifestyle forever. We have to target the lifestyle. We have to be against that. We got to understand that system from buying from them people, from supporting them people, and supporting Western culture and Western civilization in this whole, we have to eradicate that whole mind state. We have to kill a mind state. And when you kill a mind state and when you learn your history and you learn your people and you learn what was going on, then you will be in a position to fight them until not. You, you just caught up in it. This for all my man. brothers on lockdown and to get better. Real right, Peace. man. Yeah. I know how we do. All right. I hope yeah. I can. I ain't gonna get you stuck. Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah, we in the plum, baby. You know how that go. Yeah. Free veto, man. Seriously, man. Yeah. We out.